Hey everyone, welcome to 996 The Howl episode 47 for the uninitiated. This is an unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes. And what a what a roller coaster of a of a season, ladies and gentlemen. I don't follow other teams much, obviously, as I do with the Coyotes, but I have never seen this two-face white and black season um, in my short life living on earth um, folks we're talking about a team I got stats it's gonna be a long one I got stats this team started 9 27 and 5 in the first 41 games of the season two wins in their first 20 games one win in their first 12 it was rough I tell you guys, it was rough um, watching this team. It was so rough um, going in, going into the season from the off season. Um, so uh, expectations high. So many new players: uh, Stepan, Jalmerson, Ranta. Then you have Fisher and Perlini joining the team right out of the camp. Strom getting sent down. You got Nick Cousins. Who who is Nick Cousins? And uh, it was a rough couple months, but since January 1st, since game 42, let's get those stats. Game 42, 20, 14, and 7. So that's better. They got 11 more wins than the first half. But uh, we got to talk about goals against and goalies. In the first 41 games, Coyotes were a minus 57 in goal differential letting in 145 goals in 41 games. The next 41, they only let in 106 goals against. I mean, that's a difference of about 39 goals. And they, in their second half of the season, they finished with a plus 7 goal differential. You look at these stats. Goals 4 in the second half, 113. Goals 4 in the first half, 93. So goals, goals for, like, the scoring production was pretty much the same, I would say. They really didn't get so offensively hot at all throughout the season, which is a problem, which I will address later. But just looking at this, the, the goaltending solved all, almost all the problems. Um, going from a negative 52 in 41 games to a plus 7 in the next 41, it's outstanding. They actually averaged one goal less per game in the second half of the season, which leads to another stat where the Coyotes <clears throat> held the record for the most losses after leading after two periods. What does that mean? They had the worst win percentage when leading after two periods. So when Coyotes were having a lead, going into the third intermission, um, they were the worst team coming out and losing. Um, they would lose often, and why? They why would they collapse? Well, they were letting in a lot of goals, and with goalies like Deming and Hill and Wedgwood, it was a bad recipe. And uh, thankfully, when Ranta was healthy, there he is, big man Ranta, three-year extension. When he came in, he was like, "Enough is enough. Let's get going here. Let's start winning." And those collapses stopped because they were letting in one goal less per game, allowing the Coyotes to play their game, play their system, be confident in holding leads. And they weren't getting like cheap fluke goals against them that would deflate their whole mentality. This is a mentally young team. We saw this <clears throat> in the Sedins game um, just a few nights ago where they had a 3-1 lead going to the third and they blew it because the emotions were high. The, the fans were so in. It was so loud. And the players had no answer. Look at the Vegas inaugural home opener in October. They got decimated by Vegas. They couldn't handle that at all. Florida, another one comes to mind. Florida needed wins fighting for their playoff lives. And, uh, again, Cowdies had a 2-1 lead going to the third, and they blew it there. So mentally young team mentally weak team and uh when your goalies let in goals at the wrong times you just you get so deflated and you feel it on the bench and they had uh, no answers in the first half but 
thankfully the second half was great. Great hockey to watch all the way from January 1st till last Saturday. Just wanted to watch every game. So exciting. Their system really came into fruition. Playing with speed, making amazing plays. Um, amazing players on this team. I mean, I haven't been excited about players on the Coyotes for so long since, like, Domi. Because um, Bodker, Hansel, they never had amazing seasons. They'd get injured or something would happen. Uh, Keith Yano was a good guy. Even OEL scoring 20 goals. That was fun. That was fun to watch. But uh, let's start with Ranta, who finished second in goals against in the, in the whole league and second in save percentage in the whole league. Second to Carter Hudden, who only played 35 games. So Ranta played 45. I'm sorry, I didn't play 32, Ranta played 45. So, I mean, I would say Ranta was the best starter in the league, um, given those numbers. Obviously, his wins are so down due to the team he's playing on. But to have a .93 save percentage and a 2.24 goals against average on one of the worst teams in the league, you got to give Ranta credit. I mean, this guy managed to pull this team out of the – Oh, the woodwork, <clears throat> and uh, get them some wins and make them a competitive team and allow teams to respect the Coyotes when they would play them. I mean, that's all you can ask for from your goalie. And then the players start to respond. Clayton Keller <clears throat> setting the record for most goals by a rookie, most assists by a rookie, most points by a rookie. Clayton Keller, 19 years old, finishes off with 60 Five points. Jeez Louise. Uh, Clayton Keller was unbelievable. I did not expect this at all. Did not at all. Maybe 45 points, I would have guessed. But driving the top line and the chemistry with him and Stepan and Panic late into the season, amazing to watch. And then, uh, like I said, Derek Stepan, 56 points. 42 assists, his most assists in his career, one point shy of his career high, one point more than last season's totals. So Stepan was actually playing, played one of his best years in his career, and it was such a down year for the Coyotes that what do you expect next season or the year after when the Coyotes actually put it all together for full 82? So Stepan was as advertised, great two-way player, 200-foot player, great defensive um, awareness, um, sneaky offensive. His goals production was low, 14 goals, but his shot percentage was about 6%, lowest in his career. So, I mean, that's not going to last. So you get that shot percentage up, and he'll score more goals. Um, pretty much it, miscellaneous. Domi had a rough season, but he finished strong. Uh, I'm not worried about him at all. I need, the team needs Dvorak, Perlini, and Fisher to take that next step. They can't be 35-point players anymore. They need to start producing consistently and getting out of those, those rough slumps. I mean, Dvorak <clears throat> had like a one goal in his like first 20, 30 games. Then he caught fire. Perlini had stretches of no goals, and Fisher had a stretch of 30 games with no goals. Mind you, all these players finished with goals in the teens. So they have potential to get over 20 goals, 100%, potential to hit 25. If they get, <clears throat> if they get those droughts shortened enough, they could hit 30. And that would be so great to see. Um, <clears throat> OEL. Let's talk about OEL. OEL needs to start better. Uh, I think this is the second season where he starts slow and then catches fire later into the season. I know he's battling some offense, uh, off ice issues with his mother and such. Um, but yeah, we really need OEL to captain this team and um, put him on their shoulders to start the season, have a full 82 game season. I think he finished with 14 goals. So his goal production is still there. We just need him to be, he needs to be there for the kids for the whole season. And um, the trades. I mean, if you told me in the summer that we would finish the season without Duclair and Tobias Reeder, I'd be like, wow, how bad did we mess up that we need to trade Duclair 
and Reader, but not sure what happened with those guys, man. They did not produce at a competent level. Um, Duclair in his third year still struggling. I don't know what happened to the guy um, in the second year of his career. He had 20 goals in his first and then just, wow, just really nosedived in terms of production and uh, defensive liability. And then Toby Reeder, his fourth year probably as a Coyote, and uh, he did not take up the mantle at all. I mean, talk it through him on the first line, was playing him with good players, and he still wasn't producing. Only had about eight or nine goals with the Coyotes until the trade deadline, and then he got shipped out. Uh, it's unfortunate to see those guys go. I mean, they're great fan favorite players, speedy guys, but just couldn't put it together. It's tough to see the Coyotes sell short, if you will, on a couple of young, speedy guys who would whose game really translates to the modern NHL way of playing. But it wasn't working, and for some reason, when we got rid of them, the Cowboys started to play better. So it's all in the numbers. Um, Rick Tockett took a while to get his system going, but so many excuses for that. Terrible schedule to start the year. No practice time. He was showing videos of Pittsburgh to the Coyote players because he had no tapes of Coyote players. He's never coached the Coyotes before. So he was showing like Stepan and Keller, you know, be be more like Kessel or Crosby or Malkin. And these players like, can't, we can't beat Crosby. So once Taka was starting to gather video of in-game Coyote hockey, he, <clears throat> players were able to understand more and relate more and see what they were doing wrong and see what they were doing right. And that helped tremendously for players like Keller, who had his he had his sophomore slump in the middle of the in, a, in the middle of his rookie season, which is funny. Um, Coyotes finished third last, so they got eleven and a half percent to win the Rossmus Dahlin sweepstakes. If we win, wonderful. But if we lose, we still there's so many good offensive snipers in the top five, st top seven of the draft and that's exactly what this team needs they need a, a nice a nice winger who can score goals um to play with Domi and Strom I feel Domi and Strom had great chemistry in the last 10 games give them a nice winger who could shoot the puck not Ronaldo um and yeah that will be really good not sure about Ponick's future not sure what Chica would do there great chemistry with Stepan and Keller but not sure if Chaika wants Ponick to be part of the future here. A little bit more money than he would like. And I'm sure <clears throat> sure there's guys in Tucson that can replace Ponick. But um, are they ready? Who knows? And speaking of Tucson, they got the playoffs coming up. They got Stroll, Murphy, Mermis, Hanley going down there to help out. Stroll's going to be a monster in the playoffs. Hopefully they make it far. And then next season, Strom comes out and um, puts up big numbers in the Chell. Um, defensive, I didn't really talk about defense. So I think they're great. I think they got one of the best defensive cores in the league. I mean, letting in uh, 106 goals in 41 games is pretty good. Um, they never really seem to get blown out often. Maybe like two, two times since the new year they got blown out. Um, a lot of injuries um, to start the season and to end the season. We finished the season with Chikrin, Demers, Jalmerson, and um, Kanaden out of the lineup. And that hurt. And you could see it in the last game against the Ducks. But I love the defense. No problems there. <clears throat> power play needs work. I really think they should co uh, concentrate on the power play. Uh, with a new scoring winger that I hope they acquire through the draft, through the Tucson, or through a trade, <clears throat> Jesus, or through free agency, I think it will get fixed. Um, have a more consistent lineup on the power play. I liked Chikrin. <clears throat> Isn't that? I liked Chikrin on the power play uh, near the end of the season. And uh, yeah, Kemper is our backup. I'm confident in Rata and Kemper. Kemper had a couple pretty bad games but he's not being thrown into situations that are as pretty 
as Ranta, so it's easy to forgive Kemper for some of those games. But let's say that's about 14 minutes. Yeah, it was uh, a rough season to start, but a fantastic season to finish. Um, probably a C, C plus for the season. I can't believe they didn't even finish last after winning two games in the first 20 games of the season. Um, uh, this team needed a strong finish. You see solo crowds um, the last two games in Glendale. The fans are really into it. And um, <clears throat> gives the fans something to be proud of. I mean, uh, with one more year in Glendale, um, this team really needs to start putting up wins, get fans in the, in the building. And that's what's been happening in the past 20 games. So let's get going here. Let's have a good off season. Take a break. Um, Let's get back at it. Love this team. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for me. Thank you for watching all season. If you have, if you're new, I'll have a couple off season videos, whatever. If I feel like making a video, I'll make it. But uh, catch you on season three in October. And thank you for all your support. See you later.